The House of Representatives is considering making a president, vice president, governor and deputy governor lose their seat if they defect from the political party on whose platform they were elected to another. A bill proposing this was sponsored by uh, Rimande Kwewum. He is of the People's Democratic Party in Taraba State. The bill, which is awaiting second reading by the House 6, um, to amend sections 144 subsection 1 and uh, section 189 subsection 1 of the 1999 constitution as amended to check the incidence of abandoning the political party that sponsored the president, the vice president, the governor or deputy governor for another political party. Well, joining us to discuss this is John Gall Lebo. He is a former speaker of the Cross River State House of Assembly and Barrister Obinna Chuku. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. I'm going to start with you, John Gore, because obviously you have been a legislator, so you would understand where this is all coming from. But then the Constitution only, um, you know, prescribes this for the National Assembly. And, you know, um, but then I'm, I'm considering this has always been in the Constitution. And we have seen a lot of cross capiting defections every now and again. And. I mean, ever since we started this issue of political parties uh, under this new dispensation of democracy, uh, is it necessarily t about the law that is in place or about the um, making sure that this law works? It's about enforcing it. Uh, I'm wondering if we now extend it to the president or governors and deputy governors, will it still not be just one law that is there in the Constitution that is that will or never will be, um, you know, enforced? Well, I think that um, the issue of defection and not defection from one political party to the other, it's um, something that you can categorize under two foundations. First, morality, and then on the other issue of constitutionality. Morality is that you expect that um, is a moral obligation on anyone who is elected as uh, I think that um, John Gall is frozen, but let's go to Barista Albina if we can get him. Uh, Barista Albina, as a lawyer, mm -hmm. okay, uh, John Gall, are you back? Can we hear you now? Yes. Okay, yes, we, yes, we yes. lost you for a second. Go ahead. Okay. So you're talking about the basis okay. of constitutionality or, yes. uh, so, or morality? So now, yes. Now, the, you expect that under um, moral authority that someone who is elected on the basis of a political party should be able to exercise his mandate and remain within the political party. But under the constitutional provision, you discover that uh, section 68, sub 1G, and section 109, sub 1G as well, of the 1999 constitution, actually has dealt with the issue of the uh, constitutional implication of defecting from one party to another for legislators alone. That means for a senator, House of Reps, House of Assembly members. But there's no such provision for governors and the president or the vice president, which is the issue now. Now, if you check out the provision of section 68, sub 1G, section 109, sub 1G, as it affects the House of Assembly, several houses of assembly have de declared seats of House of Assembly members uh, vacant, vacant for the, uh, the mere fact that they defected. As speaker, I, I declared the seat vacant of an APC member who moved from PDP to APC because the only provision provides under which you can defect is that if there's a crisis in the national chapter of your party, that can happen. So we declare that it's vacant. Now you can't do that for the governors unless you try to look at them, maybe um, judicial precedents. For example, you try to invoke the case of Faleke against INEC or the case of Amechi against INEC or like the case of Goni against uh, I, 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 Fedeco and Goni. But outside that, you don't have such provision. So I think there's a need for a constitutional amendment to cover the provisions uh, that relates to the governor specifically, because we're talking about express provision of the law, specifying the implication. There's none for the president, the vice president, and then the governors. But there is a provision you can take up to the level of the Supreme Court for all legislators. Let me come to you, Barry Sabina. Um, just as I asked him, why is this become? Why has this become so important or expedient? Um, you know that in Nigeria, there's a saying that when um, all politicians seem to be in one voice, then there is uh, an underlying target or an underlying reason. Uh, but uh, uh, from a constitutional perspective, if these laws have been there and just w we see once in a while where seats are being declared vacant, these laws have not necessarily been enforced to the letter. 
What are we expecting if the fi you know finally the National Assembly decides to go on with this of the presidency and the vice president and governors? I mean, what difference does it make? Okay, um, first I the constitution, like you said, provides for the condition under which the members of the National Assembly can defect to one political, can defect to another political party other than the political party that brought them to office. But there, there, there is none, uh, strictly speaking, uh, for the executive. That's executive in this instance will mean the president, the vice president, governors, uh, the governor and the deputy. But to me, I will say that even the bill, the so-called bill, it is not far reaching. It is not far reaching. Even the section that provides the, the section that provides condition under which the National Assembly members can defect another political party. It is still not ill. In fact, to me, it is a sham. It is a sham because looking at it, looking at, at it from the point of view that it is only the people that elect those office holders. Then when the people validly voted for a political party and by extension electing the, 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 the officer, then the officer gets to the National Assembly or gets to get to become the governor of a state and all of a sudden, before you know it, it defects another political party. I will say that that is, an, uh, that is a way, a, a way of ensuring that the will of the people does not count. Mm -hmm. Because people can gang up and say, okay, let us, of course it has happened in Imo State before, we had a, a, polit a political party decided to allow another political party other than that uh, to contest election and win. Immediately after winning, the, same, the person defects back to another political party. I am thinking, in my view, even what the National Assembly is trying to do regarding the executive, it is not far-reaching. That is not the way to grow democracy. If we must grow democracy, we must ensure uh, that as soon as you are elected under one political party, under no guise shall, you de shall a defection to another political party be allowed. But That's isn't, the only but way to grow isn't, democracy. Isn't, I can tell you. Isn't that, that what this is? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Educate us. Isn't that what this is trying to do? Is this, isn't this no, what it's not, targeting? That's, that's not it. What this is still, this is formulated, still looking at the, the one section 68 of the constitution that provides for the condition under which a, a senator or under which a House of Rep member can defect another political party. Amongst the conditions is that where there are fractions in the political party. For goodness sake, two politicians or three or more can decide to create, uh, create fra uh, fraction in the political party. And under that guise, they will all jump ship and jump to another political party. That is not the way to grow democracy. Intention or the intendment of the drafters of the constitution that uh, that endowed the national assembly or the legislature the power to make laws. The anticipation is that once they come, the legislature comes into office, they will be able to make law that will strengthen democracy. What we have had from 1999 now, at best, can be described as a sham because it has never grown democracy. Even the new bill will not still grow democracy because the new bill is fashioned after the order of the National Assembly. Do you know what it means when a particular political party uh, has a majority in the National Assembly? They are supposed to produce the speaker. They are supposed to produce the Senate president. All of a sudden, some of uh, the members of that political party jumps another political party and automatically the will of Nigerians that wanted a national assembly headed by a particular political party is truncated under, under the guise that there is fraction or faction in a political party. That's not it. Even okay. the new bill 
the so-called bill that people are rejoicing and uh, uh, are applauding will not still take us to the promised land. Okay, all right. Yeah, the it. National Assembly must think, must think even with the so-called constitution of political party. Because what we have in Nigeria is that the, the, the way the law is structured, the way the law allows the political party to do whatever thing they like and get away with it, the pol a political party in Nigeria can kill and get away with it. Wow. The okay. National Assembly of okay. the Legislators okay. must think Okay, uh, by stopping that because we're almost out of time. Back, of time. Back to you, um, um, John Gall. Just quickly, uh, j just quickly, um, John Gall. Political parties. Now he's saying that this is more like a, a get out of jail card for politicians who are Nigerian politicians. Yes, about, yes, yes. By stopping that, just hold on. He's saying that this is a get out of jail card for every politician in Nigeria, which is an, it's a normal normal thing for politicians to you know crisscross. Um, but but shouldn't political parties themselves um, put it in their constitution to make it a sit tight thing? So it's either you choose to be in this party or you stay in the other party, but just know that you can't cross over to one divide. But I guess this boils down to the issue of ideology. Are we ever going to get that or achieve that in this country? In closing. We are not going what? to. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'll be now. This question is for John Gore. I think I think that first of all, um, we are we are already caught up in a situation of what you call like a constitutional mafia. So one, because first you're talking about the governor, you're talking about the members of the National Assembly. Once the governor and the members of the National Assembly uh, come together and and they are elected by one political party, and the governor is or Oh, I think we lost John Gold there. Unfortunately, our connections are bad. Um, but we want to thank you, John Gold. Lebo is a former speaker of the Constitutional State House of Assembly. Baris Albina is a, a legal practitioner. But we have to wrap it up here, unfortunately. But quickly, let's take a break and look at what um, uh, people were saying about the situation um, in Nigeria. Then when we come back, I'll quickly give you my take. No, 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 no. I don't think so. I think they are all... Majorly, it's called, it is called cross carpeting, but there is, when you cross carpet, you don't need to be removed from office, so your office is still with you. You just change party, you are still the elected governor. So you are still the elected official as well, so you don't need to be removed. They should. That means they are not faithful to their party, and they are not faithful to those people that are elected them. Then. But if you were actually elected to a, a position by a party, and that's where the, the masses saw you, and they voted for you, and suddenly you are moving. You are not moving for the, uh, based on the interests of the masses against now your own interest. So they should. They are one of the things that are corrupting the country. You know, they're not supposed to be. Uh, for example, I'm in APC now. I see that it's a game, anyway, because you, you make you make us to know understand that uh, they are not going there to do do something. They are going there to look for money. Depends on the people. If the people, for instance, will, will have all it takes to go to the, to the polls and have such people removed, and that is if they, are, if they are unable to perform initially. Suppose I'm in APC and I'm able to perform, and unfortunately I have the means of defecting. Well, for one reason or another, I defected, and I'm, I believe I will still perform even if I go to PDP. So there's nothing bad about that, but invariably, if it is in an environment that things work as it's supposed, if you're in a party, you're supposed to remain in that party for, for continuity and also to stabilize the party and make the party effective. Here's my take. Now, it's refreshing to see that the pulpit is being used not just for preaching, but for education social awareness and a revival of sorts to mount pressure on Nigerian leaders to get the job handed to them done properly. It's not enough, by the way, to seek for spiritual uprightness, paying off tithes and offering uh, and showing up to places of worship. Uh, I mean, and that happens when people empty out of, I mean, um, the question is what happens when we all leave church, we empty out of churches? Uh, where do we go? What do we do when we return to society? Who are the bribe takers? Those who circumvent the system, those who cut corners, the looters, the corrupt politicians, who are they? They all sit in the pews of a church or they sit in a mosque. 
if our religious leader go, go beyond, you know, preaching and start educating their followers on social responsibilities and other things, and why it's important to get involved in our political processes, I guess life will be a bit better and will be better for it as a people. So it's time to start asking the tough questions, demand answers. Pastors, don't just say you are blessed. You will have 100 million next week. Start teaching your people social responsibility and let them know why they should get their voters card and why they should belong to political parties. Yes, it is also as important as reading their Bible. There is no more time for passiveness. I am Mariana Kun, thanking you for joining us on the show tonight. Have a good evening.